Well, I've got my flat cap on because it's Founders Week. I'm not sure if it'll stay on for the whole Pulse Game show, but we've had a heck of a Founders Week, Danny. Three wins out of three. Yep, things have gone to plan, haven't they? I think tough, uh, tough trips on the road. Uh, six points and then you're back here this afternoon. And we said before the game, you know, you can't just turn up. They've been in relatively decent form, unbeaten in the last five. Um, but yeah, throughout the 90 minutes, I think you can't argue we deserved it. It was comfortable. I think that's the thing you'd say. And we looked like we were full of energy early on. Um, you know, you worry having two trips on the road. I'd say probably getting back late on uh, on Wednesday evening, maybe Thursday morning. Uh, but to come out and start the way they did this afternoon was fantastic. And generally, it's been the, the same 11 players, just one or two changes here and there. But other than that, no, it was uh, an impressive performance from the boys. Very impressive. Let's look back through some of the highlights from the game. I'm going to take this hat off. Enough for Founders Week. <laughs> Um, looking through the, the highlights from the game, of course. Um, first half, very impressive. Sunderland enjoyed yep. a lot of possession, as they did in the second as well. And they kind of dictated the entire game, didn't they? Yeah, set the stall out early on, really. Especially, we always say that at the Stadium of Life with the 40-odd thousand Sunderland fans today, you want to get them on side early on. And I felt we did that this afternoon. I think, um, you know, Patrick coming back in was full of energy. Wilson timing his runs, his movement there, almost getting a, getting himself a goal with that header. Lovely ball in from Trey Hume. Um, you know, just energy, these two in the middle, just in behind as well. Job and uh, and Chrissy Rigg, fantastic again. You know, people are talking about them young lads and you're going to burn them out playing three games in a week. But it looked like it was their, their first game of the week, didn't it? Full of energy and fresh. And there's the goal now. Starts with Patrick, as we mentioned, shows good feet, just skips it. Between a couple into Trey, Trey touch out of his feet and stands a lovely ball up there. And it invites, well deserved as well. Yeah, just invites uh, Job to come on to it. He times his run really well. Pulls off the back of one of the centre halves in between centre centre half and full back, and just puts it back in the other corner from where it's come from. And uh, we deserved it. You couldn't argue it at that stage. We were we were comfortable, as we said there. Oxford offered very little going forward throughout the 90 minutes. Yeah, Scarlett was their main outlet, but he struggled to get his foot on the ball, really, didn't he? Well, he did, yeah, and then they changed it at half time. They went to a 3 5 2, you know, moved Harris up top alongside Scarlett, but very little effect. Um, Luke O'Neill and, and uh, Chris Meppham again, outstanding, comfortable for them at the back, wasn't it? Um, just throughout the pitch, and it almost became walking football for the last 15 20 minutes. It was that comfortable. I think Oxford had just said, you know what, that'll do us, take our medicine. 2-0 on the road, yeah, they're, they're decent, unbeaten runners come to an end, but we were just, you know, if you say it, too good for them on the day. Yeah, and we're looking back through some more of these moments, Wilson Isidore, he wasn't involved all the time this afternoon, but when he was involved, he was yeah. effective. No, he, he is, yeah, and uh, as I say, when, you, when you're watching it on the telly and sometimes at these tighter grams, you can't always see his movement off the ball, and he, he's a nightmare for centre-offs, he goes into feet, he spins in behind, we've seen how quick he was last week at Hull for his goal. Yeah. Um, and th this one here, and we'll get into his goal in a minute, but just that one there, you know, he's off the back of the centre back, link up play again. Job into, into Chris Rigg was excellent, um, but he's got to time his runs. He does that, angles against him, a decent strike, and as we said, warms the keeper's gloves, and it was a sign of things to come, which was obviously the, the second goal, what we see in a minute. Um, and it just takes, I'd say, that pressure really they didn't they really work our goal. It was comfortable for Simon Moore all afternoon, wasn't it? Um, but yeah, we just controlled it, we dictated play. As I said there, if we're getting greedy, we could have gone on and tried to get a third and fourth, but the lads played within themselves, the points are in the bag. Yeah. The clean sheet for the boys at the back and Simon Moore. Um, and it's, just have a look, this one's from Job, isn't it? Yep, yeah, one off the angle there. And it, he was excellent again, wasn't he, this afternoon? Looks like he's full of energy, um, strong, powerful when he's on the ball, and he's only going to get better. Yeah. And Chris Regan and Dan Neal were also excellent in that midfield. And we, you know, we said it at half time, it's hard to say that anyone's had a bad game. No. The same situation coming out the second half. Yeah, do, do you know what? I, I'd probably go for it. You could pick several candidates, but I'd go for Dan Neal, man of the match today, just the way he orchestrated things in there. He's had a tough time in recent weeks. Particularly in honest. that second half. Yeah, as well. and then he's got, got the assist for Wilson's goal in a minute. A lovely little, little pitching wedge over the top, isn't it? Inviting it. Uh, once we'll see it in a minute but just the way he played with a bit of authority in there taking the ball off the centre backs rolling his man time and time again pictures of what's going on around him and what we know what Dan Neal's like so I thought he was excellent today and I would I would give him man of the match on that performance and his, his assist for the second goal as well yeah I think I'll probably agree with that as well just looking back through uh, a shot as well coming in from there I think the goal might be coming up soon um, Ramin Mundell he also had a great game you know you, yeah, you, that you, one there. you felt like 
a, a player maybe had another gear to go through. Yeah, I think so. Team. Yeah, it's been a long week for him. You know, he's full of energy, isn't he? When he's out there, I, I like the way that he he helps he helps out when he's tracking back as well. And it's there's the build up for the goal now. So we we stole it again. You know, Oxford trying to play out. We we regain possession into Dan Neal, and that's what we're talking about. Wilson, you've got to have that willing runner to go in behind for Dan to play that pass. And here's Wilson, and there he goes. Look off the back of his man. Could have brought it down. He's, he's got remain square if he wants it, but he's full of confidence over his shoulder. Three defenders Great around finish. him there. If you look yeah. at it, the positioning at the end. Yeah, just almost off the lace, isn't it? Just watches it drop over his shoulder. Eye on the ball. Time and contact on it. Bang. And bang, in off the post. Lovely. And he enjoys it and he can see he loves it and he enjoys playing in this uh, in this stadium in front of all these fans. Yeah, he's loving it at full time as well. He was singing to singing the Rogue away, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah. Bit of wise men say for him. And uh, it's this one, yeah, just overhit on the short corner, isn't it? But um, yeah, I, I, I enjoy Patrick's performance as well. Even sometimes he perhaps could have pulled the trigger himself. It, it, sometimes I think if you're critical of Patrick, he maybe tries too much instead of taking the, the so called easier option. But at the same time, he backs himself, which is what you like. And he's those type of players, bit of a maverick type of player out there, aren't they? And he yeah. wants to go past players. And as you see for the first goal, quick feet into Trey, and then Trey bends that ball in behind. Um, so yeah, it, rotation in the week, if you want to call it that, with Alan coming in, and then he's come back into the side this afternoon, hasn't he? Alan would have been disappointed coming out of it. You never want to come out of a, of a side that's winning and sat top of the table. Um, but we're going to need these lads throughout the course of the season. We're going to get into these cold winter months coming up, and we're going to need the squad. Yeah, more chances here for Sunderland. By this point, Aaron Connolly had come on, and Wilson Isidore had gone on to the left-hand side. Uh, you know, we had lots of corners today. There was good possession from Sunderland, of course. I'll try and get those stats up as well while we're watching the the closing changes, uh, closing exchanges, I should say, uh, of the game, Danny. But, uh, yeah, very professional performance from Sunderland. Yeah, this exactly. Afternoon. That's what you, you call it, isn't it, when, you, when you've when rolled the team over and you've not really had to, to work as hard as you perhaps thought you would have had to. Um, I think, you know, saying there, the Oxford fans, they'll be disappointed in... Maybe they haven't created. Usually, you get one or two good opportunities, don't you? They know they've had to soak up a lot of it. You know, we've probably had 75% of the ball there today. Yeah. Um, but you always rely on maybe they're going to get an opportunity from a set piece. But they didn't really have that, did they? And as I said, Simon Moore isn't going to have to wash his gloves this evening. He'll be delighted coming to the side. Uh, other than the one that Dennis gave him in the first couple of minutes, where he, you know, went behind for the corner, he's uh, he was immaculate himself, wasn't he? his handling was good when it needed yeah. to be. Uh, and it, it was our players who tested him. Oh, yeah, and then Chris Meppham gave him one yeah. to deal with as well, didn't he? Second half as well. But no, it was, it was comfortable for him and it'll be a delight this evening. Let's have a look at the latest scores, or hopefully the uh, conclu conclu concluded scores, we should say. Uh, there was a few early kickoffs and one last night at the top. So well, that was Portsmouth 1, Sheffield Wednesday 2. In the early games, Bristol City 0, Leeds United 0, Coventry City 3, Luton Town 2, Watford 1, Blackburn Rovers 0, and Burnley 0, Queen's Park Rangers Nil. Derby County 1, Hull City 1, Plymouth, they were 2-0 down at half-time, 3-3 three, three, that one ended. Sheffield United 2, Stoke City 0, you know all about our game. Swansea were beaten at home by Millwall, uh, West Brom 0-0 nil, nil against Cardiff City and uh, there's another fixture still to play in this round of fixtures between Norwich City and Middlesbrough. Let's have a look at the table and this is a good sight for Sunderland fans once again Danny, yep. as we put distance between ourselves and not just second, but seventh. Yeah, some some results went for. I think it was only Sheffield United in and around us that won out of those there, aren't they? So, um, no, yeah, a fantastic week. We had a few that went for us in the in the week as well. And as I say, you've got to go and do your own job. We managed that, and the same again. You know, Burnley drawing at home with QPR, who were struggling down the other end of the table. Um, Sheffield United, as we say, won, but West Brom dropping points. Blackburn dropping points. Watford, by the way, coming up the rails, had a few good results. Albeit last week they got beat 3 0 at, yeah, uh, yeah. at Luton, didn't they? So it's a, it's a funny old league. You've got to have consistency, and we've got that in abundance at this moment in time, haven't we? Yeah, five points clear the gap from Sunderland to Burnley. And the goal difference as well. The goal 14, difference. So Another clean yeah. sheet as well, of course. Yeah. yeah, very good. Okay, that's how the league table looks. Let's have a look at what you've been saying in hashtags. I should put my cap back on. It's Founders Week. I keep forgetting, Danny. Here we go. All right. Give us some hashtags. I don't know why I've done a Yorkshire accent <laughs> <laughs> for Founders Week. He's the first one from Liam. Uh, after our fantastic start to the season, what areas of the pitch do you think we need to strengthen in January, Danny? Oof, good question. Because um, they'll be working on that already, won't they? Yeah, I'm sure they are looking at, at positions. Um, so... 
it's a difficult one. I was chatting earlier on up the top there, and I think, you know, obviously when things are going like they are and we're sat top of the table, it's going to be difficult. You know, if, you, if you're going out in January and you're trying to strengthen the squad, I think you're looking at full-backs, not because they need to come in and play straight away. You know, Trey is on four yellow cards, I think. Obviously, you're looking at suspension, but you're looking at cover. Left back similar with Dennis had injury issues last last season. Obviously, he's coming through and yeah. he looks sharp and fit so far this season. Those two positions is where I'd worry if we picked up one or two injuries or suspensions. Uh, then you may be having to shift Luke out of centre half and you're jiggling things around, which you don't really want to do. Um, and it's a difficult one because yeah, if you you know if we're in this position in January and obviously you, you're looking to kick on and you are looking to go and get promoted, I think do the, you need to strengthen? Well, are they going to come in and play? Do you roll so the dice difficult. and go for it? Well, yes, Ipswich there is did. that. Yeah, yeah, of course they did. Yeah, Ipswich brought one or two and Kiefer Moore was a prime example of that, wasn't it? Yeah, but you have to weigh up how your squad is, how things are. You know, you've got Dan Ballard to come back in, RG as well at the back, so there's options there to come back in. Um, you know, top end of the pitch, Meenders to come back in. You've got Aaron Connolly who's just joined. Um, Isidore scoring goals so do you go and bring another striker in but then you've got four you've got Roos in here as well so you've got four or five strikers and generally we play one striker so you can't have too many you know sat there behind us on the bench yeah. waiting to get game time so it's, it's trying to get a balance but at the same time you, yes you're going to need a little bit more strength I think as well maybe looking in midfield um, you know you've got Dan Neal in there and the two young lads ahead of him as well and, you know, are they going to go the course of the season without picking up an injury or suspensions as well? So there are things to weigh up. Alan Brown in there, you know. So you, you've got one or two. You've got to weigh up the squad where we're at. One or two lads may obviously have to leave to go and get some game time. So for, for obviously for Christian and the rest of the the recruitment time, it's it's going to be an interesting period. Another hashtag then, if we can. This will be the last one we've got time for, probably from Dan. Got Luke Littler there's his profile picture. Um, Luke the Nuke says, uh, hello from the Big Apple. Been super impressed with all of the lads so far this season. What do you think has changed specifically in our style of play? We mentioned something in commentary today, Danny. It was that desire to win the ball back, and that's definitely a Regis Lebris thing, isn't it? Yeah, so I'm guessing he's asking the question from where we were at last season in terms of after, obviously, Tony went and Michael Beale come in and then obviously Mike Dodds took over. I think it was a combination of the season caught up with us a bit. Um, we, we just we had a lot of possession last year. I said earlier we had 62-63% of the ball. Uh, this year we're only 44-45. I think we've increased recently, certainly more after today. Um, but it's what we're doing with the ball when we get it. It's moving the ball quicker. It's as simple as that for me. You know, the times where we've dominated teams here, and you can see, oh, well, teams come up to the stadium light and sit behind the ball. And how do you break them down? You've got to move the ball quicker. It's as simple as that. It doesn't matter what level you play at. If you're moving the ball, taking four or five touches across the back line, the opposition are saying, right, that's all well and good, but we'll just shift across in our shape. If you're taking one or two touches and you're wrapping it into each other, you're missing players out. They've got to work harder across the pitch. And, you know, I've been there as a player when you go to the likes of Stamford Bridge and one or two other places when they're, it feels like the Red Arrows, there's bodies all over the place you're constantly working without the ball uh, it becomes difficult you're using all that energy up without getting a touch on it and then when you get the ball you know you're blowing you're not in your shape to, to break the opposition down so that was the prime example today I thought at times that we had two or three in the first half especially we had one of the centre backs wrapped it into Job he was on the half turn he played it into Chris Rigg and we were onto their back line we've seen that a few times and that it's just taking fewer touches He's pretty much set us up in a 4-3-3 for me, as we as we see it more often than not. Um, I think, go back to the Watford game where we had to change it at half-time a little bit because they dominated us and we weren't sure how to play their 3-5-2. Um, and in terms of pressing, yes, you know, go back, I always go back to his coaching video when he was out in Spain where he was like high press, he wanted us to go yeah. pressing, go pressing, getting after the opposition. Said about Luton, you can't always do it for 90 minutes. L Luton almost burnt out, I think. And we had a good 10, 15 minutes after half-time. Yeah where they sat off us and that was where we sort of Went took, out. took a little bit of control in the game really didn't we yes they come back into it with a set piece um, but you have to weigh the opposition up as well who you're up against do, is it a team who like to go direct is it a Leeds who want to play the same way as us in terms of going and pressing and we've seen that with them for half an hour or so in that first half a few weeks back here after we scored you know they they, they really camped in our half and pressed us and we, we struggled to get out so you're going to have moments like that in a game um, a lot of it a lot of it obviously comes from the touchline and then obviously it comes from the lads on the pitch and you can sense it Luke 9 and Chris Mepham in behind there the two experienced boys have seen it when they want the lads to go and press triggers from the top end of the pitch so there's a lot of it that comes into it but at this moment in time things are working out well he 
certainly are. Thanks, Danny, for your company this week. He won Founders Week, and Sunderland have come through with flying colours, uh, all three points, oh, from nine points from, from their three games as well. Uh, the next game, no midweek, next game is on the 2nd of November. November already, Danny, can you believe it? Uh, and that will be against Queen's Park Rangers down at Loftus Road. It's a 3 p.m. kickoff for that one. Meaning will be on air from 2.15 for a 3 p.m. kickoff. And you can buy your matchday streaming passes right now at safc.com. So like I say, a good day for Sunderland, a good week for Sunderland in Founders Week. We'll see you soon.